car ride. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Imagine you're on a long car ride or you're camping and you it started to rain. What do you do? You usually play puzzles. There's or some games. There are a lot of games that people like to play. One of the games is a Chinese puzzle called Tangrams. It's like Sudoku or any other puzzles. You have to use your brain power to solve it. So today we are going to be talking about tangrams and what are they and what are some things that you can do and then we will bake a tangram cake. Let's begin by learning about tangrams. What is a tangram? Tangram, tangram is a Chinese puzzle which is made of seven shapes and all of these seven shapes could be put in one square. You have two large triangles, you'll have one medium sized triangle, you will have two small triangles, one square and one parallelogram. So these are the seven shapes that is in a tangram. The rules of the puzzle are the following. You can build the shape using all of the shapes from the tangram. They have to touch each other but they cannot overlap. Just like in this square, all of the shapes are touching each other and none of them overlap. All seven pieces must be used to build a new shape. So for example, you, you can just take some shapes out and say, oh, I have a triangle. So this will not be the right for this puzzle. You have to use all of the shapes in the puzzle. You also can, um, so how can you make a, um, how can you make a tangram at home? You can download the worksheet from the description below. You can print them and here you go. You have all of your seven shapes. You cut them out and you're ready to play. You can use some felt paper or felt material and cut them out. So this is a fun way to build new shapes. Or you can use some construction paper. Cut, trace your shapes on the construction paper. Cut it out and build some new shapes. So what are some sh Yeah, what, what are some shapes can you build using tangram pieces? In our story today, the grand, grandfather's tang story, we will learn how to build different shapes. And then you can try those at home. In the end, we'll pick a shape for our cake as well. Grandfather's tang story. A tale told with tangrams. Author Anne Trompert and illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. Grandfather Tang and Little Sue were sitting under a peach tree in their backyard. They were amusing each other by making different shapes with their tangram puzzles. Let's do a story about the fox fairies, said Little Sue. So Grandfather Tang arranged his seven tangram pieces into a shape of a fox. Then Grandfather Tang made another fox with Little Sue's seven tangram pieces. Little Sue clapped her hands as her grandfather began. Although Zhu and Wu Ling were best friends, they were always trying to outdo each other. One day, this rivalry almost brought their relationship to a tragic end. They were sitting under their favorite willow tree beside a river, talking about their magic powers. I can change myself into a rabbit as quick as the wink, boasted Wu Ling. I'll bet you can't do that. I can too, said Zhu. Cannot, said Wu Ling. Anyway, actions speak louder than words. And then he changed himself into a rabbit. Not bad, said Zhu, smoothing his whiskers. But watch me do better than that. And before Wu Ling could blink, Zhu changed from a fox into a dog. Now, when Zhu changed himself into a dog, he not only looked like a dog, but he felt like a dog and acted like a dog. He bared his teeth and lashed his tail. Wooling shivered and twitched his nose. I love rabbits, Zhu growled, and I'm going to get you and gobble you up. The dog edged closer and closer. Wooling's eyes grew bigger and bigger. He was too frightened to move at first. But then he thought, I'll be safe if I can climb up the willow tree. His little puff of a tail grew long and bushy, and his tall ears shrunk as Wu Ling transformed himself into a squirrel. Wu Ling sprang into the willow tree and scrambled to the top. Zhu will probably turn himself into a cat so he can climb up the tree after me, Wu Ling said to himself. 
but he'll never catch me. I'll jump from tree to tree and he won't be able to follow me. Of course, Zhu thought about changing himself into a cat, but that's what Wu Ling expects me to do, he thought to himself. What can I do to surprise him? He thought and thought, I know, I'll swoop down upon him from above. And he turned himself into a hawk. Zhu circled around and round in the sky above the willow tree searching for Wu Ling. Wu Ling peered through the leaves of the tree looking for Zhu on the ground. Round and round Zhu circled the willow tree until he spied Wu Ling. Cat! 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 He shrieked as he zoomed down upon the squirrel. Wu Ling trembled. Zhu's beak looked sharp enough to piece right through him. If only I lived in a shell house, he thought, then Zhu couldn't hurt me. Zhu stuck out his fierce claws to seize Wu Ling, but Wu Ling dove towards the river below the willow tree, and as he dove, he tucked in his head and tail and legs, turned green and changed into a turtle. Wu Ling climbed up on a mossy rock in the middle of the river. He thought he was safe because he looked as if he were a part of the rock. Zhu circled round and round, searching and searching until his sharp eyes spotted the turtle. Then he swooped down, down, down toward him. But just as Zhu reached him, Wu Ling plunged into the water. Follow me and you'll drown, he cried. Don't worry, cried Zhu, plunging right behind Wu Ling. His body grew longer, covered with scales. He whipped the water with his long wicked tail and he snapped his spiked tooth jaws as he turned into a crocodile. Wu Ling circled round and round as he plunged down, down, down to the bottom of the river. Zhu lashed his wicked tail as he plunged after Wu Ling. Just as they reached the bottom, Zhu clamped Wu Ling in his spiked toothed mouth. Now I've got you, he bellowed through his clenched teeth. Oh no, you haven't, cried Wu Ling, who grew smaller and smaller and changed himself from green to gold as he transformed himself into goldfish. And he swam out of Zhu's mouth between his spiked teeth. Then he hid in a patch of cattails. Zhu churned the water with his lashing tail as he charged into the patch after Wu Ling. With his head swinging back and forth and his eyes darting here and there, he searched for Wu Ling. Wu Ling knew that Zhu would not give up until he found him. I must fly from here, he thought, and he started to home as he transformed himself into a goose. Zhu charged after him, but Wu Ling spread his wings and took to the air. Zhu watched him fly to a small island where a flock of geese were feeding. By now, he was not only very angry, he was also very hungry. He decided that if he could not catch Wu Ling, any goose would make him a good dinner. He splashed through the water towards the island until he reached it. Hong Kong Kong called Wu Ling and he took to the air. A chorus of honks swelled the air as the flocks of geese spread their wings to follow him. While Zhu watched, the honking grew fainter, the flock grew smaller, and he felt his anger slowly drain away. Why, oh why did we play that stupid game? He moaned. I'll never see Wu Ling again. He closed his eyes and sank toward the river bottom. Just as he touched it, however, he had an idea, and up, up he popped again a goose himself. Moment later, Zhu was flying after Wu Ling and the other geese. He could hardly see or hear them at first, but he did not let this discourage him. Calling upon every last bit of his strength, he forged ahead. Each flap of his wings brought him closer. The wedge of geese slowly grew bigger, the honking grew louder. At last, Zhu found himself flying beside Wu Ling. I am tired of our silly game, he cried. Come back with me to our willow tree. Before Wu Ling could answer, something stung Zhu's right wing. He sank towards the ground. A hunter had shot him. Wu Ling flew down beside Zhu, placed his left wing under Zhu's smashed right wing, and together they fluttered down to the edge of the forest. 
The hunter ran towards them. Fly away, Zhu urged Wu Ling. Save yourself, fly, fly. Save yourself, fly, fly. I won't deserve you, cried Wu Ling. And with a mighty roar, he changed into a lion. The hunter raised his bow. Wu Ling sprang toward him and knocked the bow from his hand. The hunter fled leaving his bow behind. Wu Ling and Zhu returned to their fox shapes and Wu Ling helped Zhu to his den where he took care of him until he was mended. Did they ever play this game again? asked little Sue. Many times, said her grandfather, but they were very, very careful. That was a good story, said little Sue. Let's do another. Grandfather arranged his seven tangram pieces. Is this story going to be about a man? asked little Sue. Yes, said the, her grandfather. He's old and he is tired. He wants to sit under a tree and rest a while. Is he a grandfather like you? asked little Sue. Yes, said her grandfather, just like me. Little Sue arranged the seven pieces of her tangram beside her grandfather's. Is that a little girl? he asked. Yes, said little Sue, just like me. She'll sit and rest beside the man. That will make him very happy, said Grandfather Tang. And now, little Sue, what will we do? We'll sit and rest together until Mother calls us for supper, said little Sue. That will make me very happy, said her grandfather. Fox fairies and Grandfather Tang's story are an integral part of Chinese folk folklore. They are believed to be endowed with the supernatural powers of transformations. Fox fairies are said to live for 800 to 1,000 years. Let's talk about how we're gonna make a 10 gram cake. So for my cake, I'm just going to do a regular white sugar cake base. So I'm going to start with making a flat sheet, flat cake, then I'm going to use my shapes that I cut and on the paper and I'm going to cut the pieces out of it and build a shape from our story. So I picked fox, foxes, because the, the story is about foxes fairies that are believed as special fairies in Chinese culture. So we're going to make a fox cake and the ant. So the first step, you're going to prepare your materials or your things, your ingredients uh, for your cake. You'll need half a cup of butter, you'll need two eggs, you'll need baking powder, you need some milk, vanilla extract, sugar and flour. So the first step is going to do is you're going to soften the butter, which means leaving them it leaving the butter in a, a room temperature so it gets soft. You're going to put your butter in. The next step, you're going to put some um, sugar in. You need a cup of sugar. Okay, you want to put a cup of sugar in? Look, you want to do some sugar? Ooh, I gotta get it in. And I'm going to let Kate put the sugar in. Kate, you want to put sugar in? Let's put this away. Here you go. Put this in. You hold it. Good girl. Good job. You put your one cup sugar in the butter and the next step is going to, you're going to use a hand mixer or a stand up mixer that you have at home and you're going to whisk it all together. Once your uh, butter and the sugar are mixed, there should be just one soft paste, right, together so you don't want it separate, so you want it mixed together. I believe the next step, so I'm following a recipe, I'm going to be posting it below in the, com in the description below as well, so you can follow that along. Then you're going to use, put some eggs in. You're going to do one egg at a time, so you're gonna break one egg, whisk it together, then you're gonna do another one. Yeah, you're going to do egg number two. Do the same thing, whisk it all together. And here you go, it should look kind of like this. It's getting into the batter stage. We're going to put some splash of vanilla. Whisk it one more time. Now we're going to put our dry ingredients, which is we need to put one and a half cup of all-purpose flour and 
wine and three fourths teaspoon of baking powders. And we're going to get one cup. Good girl. One cup. Ooh. And we are going to measure our baking powder. I'm going to use this. And now it's time to sift it all together so that the batter is unified and has no little balls in there. So we want it smooth and nice. Mm. You're going to mix it all really well together. And once this is all mixed really well, our last step is to add our milk. And you should have a smooth batter that should be easy to pour into our pre-greased tray. Make sure you put some butter on it so it doesn't stick. Okay, here comes the milk. I pour the milk in. Once we mixed our milk in, your batter should be much more easier to pour in, so I'm just looking for the right consistency. Make sure it's all incorporated, incorporated all the ingredients. It should be nice and smooth. Final step, what we're going to do is what well, we're going to pour the batter in. And for our cake, because we're making a, um, a small cake, we're going to, I wanted to make, um, and I'm going to use small shapes, so we're going to make just a rectangular shape, and then we're going to cut the shapes out of it. So next step is to pour the batter in. So now our batter is in the cooking tray. Our next step is to put it in the oven and bake it at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. And then we're going to cut our shapes out. We're going to build a fox out of it. And then also we will put some cream on. While my cake is baking in the oven, I'm going to make a buttercream icing. So for this, I'll need a cup of butter, I'll need a couple tablespoons of milk, vanilla extract, and confectioner's sugar. I also will need a bowl, and I will use a hand, hand mixer to whisk it together. The first step is you're going to put your butter in, and remember it has to be softened at the room temperature so you can work it easy with the spoon or the hand mixer. So you're going to put your butter in. You're going to use your hand mixer and you're going to mix it together so it's not too big squares. You want it to have it smooth and nice before you add any sugar. Yeah, now my, uh, my butter is ready and I'm going to add some confectioner's sugar. You can put as much sugar as you'd like. If you like it to be less sweet, you can put less sugar. Or if you'd like it more sweet, you can put more sugar. So you're gonna put some sugar in and then whisk it. As I whisk the egg and sugar, you, you can see it becomes more creamy and light. Oh, no. And I'm going to add a little bit more sugar. I usually put about a cup, but you can put more. So I, since the first time I put less than a cup, I'm gonna add a little bit more, whisk it more together. You can, next step, you're gonna, going to add some milk to make the buttercream a little more smooth and easy to put on the cake. So I'm going to put some milk. Vanilla extract, and finally we're going to add, after vanilla, we're going to make, add some food coloring. So depending on what shape you're making, that's the color you're going to pick. Because I'm making fox berries, I'm going to make, to use uh, orange color, and for that, I'm going to use the gel food coloring, and yes. here it says if you want kind of orange or apricot colors, eight green uh, drops and three pinks. So I'm going to do eight green, I have my green drops here. Six, seven, eight, and the next one is to add some pink. And that should give us our orange. So we're going to whisk it again. You can see the color is kind of turning orange, but I do want it a little bit more. Maybe I'll add a couple more drops. 
So just to make it a little brighter, whisk it again. Now let's make our cake. So our cake uh, was in the oven for about 30 minutes. Now it has all pretty golden color. So next step is to take my shape that I already pre-cut and I'm going to cut it out of the cake and I'm going to build a tangrip cake on this tray. So the first step I'm just going to place, start with the big rectangles. I'm going to follow the shape and as close as I can. And I'm going to cut the shake out of the cake. Now our next step is we're going to cut each of these pieces in half so we can put some of the um, frosting inside so our cake is, tastes better. So I'm just taking each shape, just slicing it in half. Okay. And final step is we're going to put the frosting in between and then put the frosting on top and then arrange all our pieces together. Here is the shape of a fox that I arranged using all seven pieces of tangram. Uh, remember when you build something using tangram pieces, following the rules you have to use all of the shapes and try, try to build the shapes. So one of the shapes that I built for, is from the store that we read today. It's about fox, foxes and those are fairies and they're believed to be have special abilities in Chinese culture. So as I put this frosting in on the cake, if it gets too soft, you can put it in the fridge for 10-15 minutes and then take it out and keep working. Go ahead and write in the comments below what shapes did you make using your tangram pieces? Or did you make a cake? Or did you just use paper to build some new shapes? All of the shapes from the story are in the description below so you can try to build them yourself or you can use the challenge page where you try to build all of the shapes without looking at the steps, right? So you can try to just think about it, look at the shapes and try to figure out all by yourself. My cake was in the fridge for about 10 minutes and now I used my knife and I smoothed out the surface so you can see that the frosting looks much better. And the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chocolate syrup and, and a fork and I'm going to create some texture just for fun to make, to make it look like more like a fox. So I'm going to use my fork and kind of make strokes like fluffy hair because foxes have really fluffy hair. So you can kind of create a texture by using all kinds of tools that you have. Going to put some on the tail as well. So it looks more like a fox. I'm going to leave the face without it. And this next step I'm going to use the chocolate syrup and I'm going to make a face for that. So I'm going to put some eyes. and the nose and here you go this is the cake made out of seven shapes using the simple tangram pieces if you like this video go ahead like share and subscribe and come back to see more episodes with kate have a good day What are you doing? You baking? Are you baking? Oh, you just sneezed into the... Ooh. You contaminated the cake batter.